here are all of the biggest mistakes that I've made in my business in the last decade. Hopefully you can learn from this and shortcut your success and avoid the same mistakes that I've made. I've made a ton of mistakes during multiple different businesses and I thought it would be really useful to reflect on these mistakes so that you can learn from them and not make the same mistakes that I've made. But another thing worth noting is that everything unfolds at exactly the right time and when you are ready. There are very good reasons why I made these mistakes and why I had to make these mistakes because I wouldn't be who I am now without them. Without feeling like a failure and having everything come crashing down on me, I wouldn't be able to help other people who are struggling in the same way. And it's often the case that the more people you want to help, the more mistakes you'll have made and the more you will have suffered and that's because you will have learned from all of those mistakes and you'll be able to help more people with more problems. So just for the record, I don't regret anything. I'm grateful for all of my experiences as I believe that we learn more from our so-called mistakes than we do from our successes. We can't be successful until we failed first. And you could also just call this practice, not failure. However you look at it, I really hope you enjoy today's content. My name is Kath Kyle and I lead the Hustle Less Manifest More movement. I help creators and change makers manifest a massive audience and transform millions of lives by creating a magnetic movement. So I would love to know what have been your biggest mistakes in your business. You can DM me on Instagram at Kath Kyle Official. So here are my 10 biggest business mistakes I've made in the last 10 years. Mistake number one, not pivoting quickly enough to doing what I love. After I'd been working on my first business, Green Thickies, for about five years, I had a really strong desire to not do it anymore and simply to start another business. I just lost my passion for it. And although I did actually end up starting quite a few other businesses, I often found myself working full time on Green Thickies again shortly after. Green Thickies was doing so well, making such good money that I felt like it would be stupid to turn my back on it at the height of its success. So I continued to plug away, creating content that I'd lost passion for, and in the end, it didn't serve any of my businesses well at all. Our energy can be felt by our customers, so if our heart isn't in our work, then this will affect our results. Mistake number two is not continuing to do what works. So after starting my first business, I figured out several things that worked really well, but for some reason I stopped doing them when I started other businesses. So here are the things that I wished I'd continued doing. The first thing is to plan your business first. What will you sell? How will you sell it? What is an overview of what the business looks like? Planning my results in advance served me so well that I always do this now and I always teach this to my customers. If you don't decide what you want, how will you know when you've achieved anything? When I failed to plan previous businesses, I didn't have the motivation to continue them because I didn't have a big vision as to what the business actually looked like. The second thing that I wished I'd continue doing was to visualize my success. With my first business, I imagined what success would look like for me. But after starting new businesses after that, I got straight on with the work without taking time to create my results in advance. And of course, these businesses never ended up going anywhere because I just didn't see where I was going with them. The next thing that I wished I'd continue doing was focusing on the work that you love. In my first business, I focused on doing what I loved the most, which is blogging, creating digital products and marketing to the masses. I focused on helping people who wanted to be helped, i.e. those people who found me and I didn't need to seek them out first. 
But when I started my second business, which was actually a network marketing business, for a while I was really successful while I was focusing on doing very similar activities that I really loved, which was writing blog posts and creating products. But after a while, after being in the network marketing company for a while, going through all the training, I was persuaded that what I actually needed to be doing was hosting essential oils parties locally for my friends, persuading my friends to join my team and spending my day messaging random people on Facebook to start conversations to try and get them to join my team. And needless to say, I got sick of this work very quickly as it just, just isn't in my personality to do these kind of things. As an introvert, I spent so much time chatting with people all day long that I totally burned out from it all and I went into major hibernation mode for several years after that. And I've learned my lesson from that and now I focus mainly on doing the work that I love, which is to create things in my own time, but I do actually see the value in stretching myself out of my comfort zone and I spend time every day engaging with people. I also plan live trainings some of the time. I just don't do them most of the time. Mistake number three is working too hard. After I lost my passion for my first business, I threw myself into major hustle mode and totally overworked. I figured, like most business owners do, that the more I worked, the better my chances of success would be. And at that point, I really didn't understand how to manifest my results. I'd had some results with manifestation and put all my faith in it and when my energy was nice and light, I got really good results. But if I had truly understood how manifestation actually worked, I could have avoided a major burnout that led to debilitating health problems for six months. Now I'm very strict with myself when it comes to my health and my business. I always do a workout, some sort of exercise at the start of the day because my health matters more to me than my business. And I have a rule of never working in the evening because my downtime, my relaxation, my fun, my time with family and my sleep matter to me way more than my business. After my burnout, my kids didn't have a mother who could look after them. They continued to need me every day and I wasn't there for them. However, my business continued to make me money while I was out of action. In fact, it made me even more money when I wasn't working on it, which was a very powerful lesson for me to have to learn the hard way. Mistake number four, focusing more on strategy than spirituality. Although I have always loved learning new strategies and still love to experiment with my business, I made the mistake of focusing on strategy to the detriment of spirituality. That meant I gave up on my morning routine, I gave up on my journaling, I gave up on my intention statements, I gave up manifesting anything and I thought that sheer hard work and strategic working would propel me to the next level in my business. Learning and implementing every single business strategy under the sun did not boost my business. What actually happened was the, the very new thing that I had implemented in my business would actually boost my revenue. But what would actually happen would be that some other income stream for my business that had been totally stable and reliable for many, many years would drop by exactly the same amount as the new strategy had increased by. And this went on for an embarrassingly long time. It actually went on for years and years. And towards the tail end of this time, I actually knew that this was an energetic problem, but I just didn't know what to do about it. And now I know that my spirituality always comes first, no matter what. And I finally know how to create from energy rather than hustle. Mistake number five, letting fear of losing it all dominate everything. As soon as my business reached six figures for the first time, we went a little crazy. We upgraded our lifestyle in a very big way. 
we bought a new house twice the size we upgraded our car we hired a housekeeper a gardener an accountant etc etc we enrolled both of the kids in a full-time private forest nursery and we started going on luxury foreign holidays and very soon my gratitude turned to fear I became so scared that my revenue would drop and that I wouldn't be able to afford to pay for all these new things in my life. Everything that I did was clouded by this fear that I couldn't seem to shake off. And very soon, what I feared the most actually became a reality. My business started to go downhill and my revenue started to dwindle. I started to research how to save money and how to be frugal. I started to cut back on things. We sold our luxurious big family car and bought a tiny little car that we absolutely hated. We let our housekeeper go and I started to clean the house myself. We let our gardener go and my husband started to cut the grass himself. We swapped our expensive foreign holidays for budget caravan holidays, which actually, funnily enough, we ended up enjoying way more. So we have actually kept those. Strangely enough, my revenue was just high enough to keep the kids in their nurseries. I didn't take them out of nursery, but as soon as my daughter was old enough to start to attend school for free, we thought that we would save a fortune every month. But then my revenue dropped by exactly the same amount that we had saved from the nursery. No kidding. The profit was exactly the same. And two years later, the exact same thing happened when my son left nursery. It was the weirdest thing ever and it totally proved to me the things that happen to us in life are not random. There is a spiritual reason for everything. And I didn't understand it then, but now I understand it. I was convinced that my revenue would continue to drop, which it did. So my reality was shaped by my belief system. But I also had it in the back of my mind, a contradictory thought that in the end, everything would be okay and we'd always have enough for our needs, which funnily enough, we actually did. So my beliefs controlled my revenue very strongly and very obviously. And I would love to know, has anything like this ever happened to you? Have you ever manifested a lot of money and then you've got a bill or some kind of thing has broken and it's ended up costing you the exact same as that money that's just come in. So this is all energetic and it's all led by underlying belief systems. Mistake number six, feeling like I couldn't show up as myself. So in previous businesses, I always felt like recording videos was too much like hard work because I'd have to do my hair and makeup first. But actually these days I rarely wear makeup and I might wear makeup maybe once a year if that, if I maybe go out somewhere nice. Um, but after lockdown and we haven't really gone out anywhere that I have felt the need to wear makeup for. So I decided that in this business, I was going to show up exactly as myself, which is to show my face free from makeup, because this is exactly what I look like every day. Weekdays, weekends, I always look the same these days. So why shouldn't women be able to walk around with a natural face just like men do? It's always puzzled me. I've not actually got anything against wearing makeup. I think it, it can look really nice, but I do find it a bit strange that women put on this complete mask and walk around looking like somebody else. Like I literally don't recognize people when they've got a full face of makeup on and when they take it off, I just think they look like a completely different person. And my philosophy is I am who I am. I'm not a model. Um, what I do is I educate business owners. Therefore, I don't see the need to change the way I look. I don't feel like I need to show up on Instagram looking like a model in a bikini. That's just not who I am. Another way that I didn't allow myself to be myself was that I was always comparing myself to other people and thinking that I could never really be successful because I didn't do what other people did. 
And I see other people interviewing each other on podcasts and I have no desire whatsoever to do that. I used to really let this hold me back, but now I embrace my desires. I know what work I enjoy and I focus on doing what I love. And that is being on my own and creating things that help people, not having conversations and chit chat and small talk all day long. That's just not me. Mistake number seven thinking my limiting beliefs about myself couldn't be changed. I used to have so many limiting beliefs that I allowed to hold me back in business. And I'll just share a few of them with you. For some reason, I didn't think I could change any of these. So I just used them as an excuse as to why I wasn't more successful. Whereas in fact, now I either accept the way I am, I own it and I love the way I am or I change it, no excuses. I used to believe that I couldn't be successful because I felt ugly. I have had two injuries resulting in deformities and I felt so ugly that I shied away from the camera for many years. I thought people would be so disgusted at me that they would become far too distracted in being disgusted looking at me to want to work with me. But now I have allowed myself to feel comfortable in my own skin. I actually forget what I even look like on the outside. As far as I'm concerned, I have no issue with the way I look. And since I've taken on this attitude, I've not really had any comments about my appearance. So to me now, this is not an issue. Another belief that used to hold me back was that I felt stupid. I felt like my general knowledge was so limited because I'm simply not interested in current affairs and I don't watch the news. And I was worried that people would see me as ignorant. I was so terrified to even have a conversation with someone in case they would bring up a topic that I didn't know about. But I have realized that I actually don't desire to change this because I don't want to start watching the news. I'm not really interested in current affairs. I really like to go deep on certain subjects and I like to learn everything I can about those particular subjects. So it doesn't really interest me to start spending my free time, which I don't have that much of, on current affairs. Even after I've just said that sentence, I have just identified another belief or another story that I keep telling myself is that I don't have very much time. So that is something that I'm going to work on in the future. So that's why it's really good to say these things out loud in a conversation when you are talking to other people or you're simply creating content. You pick up things about the way you speak and you can identify, ah, that sounded negative. That sounded like an excuse or I'm holding myself back and a limiting belief because it doesn't have to be that way at all. So now if somebody mentions something that I'm not aware of, if I'm interested in what they're talking about, I simply ask them more questions and I don't really care what people think of me. So I don't have time for pretending to be someone that I'm not. One more belief that I have had about myself until very recently is that I have a bad memory. And this is a story that I have been telling myself most of my life. And I overcompensated for this by being extremely organized and making lists of lists for everything in my life. I would tell my family that I was really sorry, but I couldn't remember things that they asked me to do unless they sent me a request digitally. They sent me some kind of message. And when I was in my last job a really long time ago, my boss used to stick post-it notes on my shirt as she walked past me in the corridor as she knew that I wouldn't remember things that she had asked me to do verbally. I forgot them all the time, every single one, and she got sick of it. And she asked another boss of mine why I wasn't doing the things that she wanted me to do. And my boss said that she always emailed me with a list of things that she wanted me to do, and I always did them. But the other boss decided that she wasn't really interested in sending me an email. She thought she'd just scribble them down and stick them on me instead. <laughs> so in business, this has held me back as I've had a fear of going live in case I couldn't remember what I wanted to talk about or in case somebody asked me a question and I couldn't remember something, an answer to it or some, something that would be helpful that I already knew or I was worried that I would have mind blanks, which 
would actually happen quite a lot as I'm having a conversation with somebody. And often when I read a book, I can't remember a single thing about it. So it definitely has had an impact on my life. And lately I've caught myself telling this negative story about my memory and I've decided that this isn't something that I want to accept and embrace. This is actually something that I want to change about myself. So I have started manifesting what I actually want. I've started saying affirmations about having a good memory and things have started to change as a result. Recently, I was prompted, I got some insight, an idea to go and search for some ways to improve my memory and and that wouldn't have happened unless I changed my mind and decided that actually I'm willing to change this now. Then you get start getting the ideas for the how, how to do it. But if you just keep telling yourself that same negative story, you'll never get those good ideas. So that's been proof to me that all my, you know, this has been going on for decades and I've never had a single idea or a prompt to ever go and improve it until I decided I have a good memory. And then to prove it, I have got the how. So I have went online and searched for some ways to improve my memory and I got really excited because it seems like it's actually quite easy to improve your memory. There's actually some really easy to use techniques which I am going to start using. So watch this space and I will let you know in the future how that goes. And just that thought actually prompted some really good ideas as, as to how I could link memory and manifestation together. So I am going to be sharing way more content on that topic in the future. So it just goes to show that when you let go of limiting beliefs, everything can change in an instant and things that have been holding you back become the focus of something positive rather than something negative. So where I am right now, I'm not willing to believe in anything that's an excuse for not having the success that I want to have. Mistake number eight, is affirming negative things about my business. For many years, I got into a very bad habit of affirming negative things about my business. And this all started when I developed a major fear that my revenue would decrease. When I voiced this to my husband, he would try and stay positive by saying, I'm sure that everything will be okay. And for some reason, I would feel the need to prove that things actually were going very badly by giving him evidence of that fact. So have you ever done this yourself? Is it, have you ever said to somebody, oh, something's going badly in my life and they would say, oh, I'm sure it's not as bad as you think or I'm sure it's everything will be okay. And you say, no, it's terrible actually. And here's all the reasons why and here's the evidence why. And you're actually perpetuating that negativity. So it's crazy that we do this, but this is something really weird that humans tend to do. So eventually I had convinced him that my business was going downhill and then he'd start joining me by worrying about my declining business. And this is something that you will notice as well that other people will reflect back to you what you're actually thinking. If you start declaring that things are failing, then you'll notice other people saying the same things about you. And I've no idea how I let myself get into such a rut for such a long time. But as soon as you start to affirm negative things, you find even more things to be negative about. And then you see even more evidence to support that. And it just becomes a vicious circle. But now, thankfully, I am in the habit of affirming good things about my business. So when I start to worry, which is normal, we all do it, I can now catch myself and turn that thought around quickly by telling myself it's working, it's working before things get out of control and before that, that thought becomes a belief that starts to shape my reality. Mistake number nine is forgetting why I even started my business in the first place. I started my first business to help people to lose weight and improve their health. My focus for every single piece of content was always to give them everything that they could possibly need to help them on this journey. However, when I lost my passion for my business, I forgot all about why I even started my business, which was to help people. And instead, I was consumed with worry about myself. My thoughts were all selfish, lack-based and negative. And there's actually nothing wrong with desiring money as a business owner. It's actually a good thing to desire money. But if your desire for money comes from a place of fear, 
then it will never end well. However, if you desire good things for yourself, you'll naturally desire good things for other people too. This is an abundance mindset and a win-win for everybody. Mistake number 10, not manifesting more. It actually took me a really long time to learn that I can literally have anything that I want. If I had spent more time learning about manifestation, I wouldn't have spent such a long time in a slump with my business, in a slump with my health and in a slump with my entire life. I was very depressed for many years and I overworked to block that out so I didn't have to deal with it. And I now know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I can manifest anything that I desire. The thing that trips us up the most with manifesting is not believing that we can have anything that we desire. When we imagine what we want and it doesn't show up right away, we can start to tell ourselves that it's not working or I'm not good at manifesting and if you say these things often enough, it will override any visualization that you've already done. However, we are not in control of when our manifestation will show up, only that it will at some point. And knowing this gives you peace of mind to enjoy the process, enjoy the journey as it's unfolding, knowing that your desires will materialize. And thankfully, I'm back in the place where I am loving my work. I love everything I do and I do it with the attitude of how can I be the most helpful that I can be right now? Because I know that I've already manifested everything that I've ever wanted in my life and my new desires will materialize in good time. Not knowing exactly when, is what makes life exciting. So now you know how to avoid all of the biggest mistakes that I made with my business, would you like to know how to grow a sizable audience for your business? The best way to grow a huge audience, get your content shared and attract your ideal tribe is to continuously encourage your audience to adopt a habit that will transform their lives. Once you've started to attract a group of people who are all implementing your suggested transformational habit, you have started a movement and a movement will totally put your business on the map and create a massive amount of desire for your products. I have reached multiple millions in multiple businesses by creating magnetic movements and I'm now revealing the secrets to my success in my free guide. For a limited time, I've given you free access to my ultimate guide to creating a magnetic movement. And you can get that by going to kathkyle.com forward slash movement guide or by clicking the link surrounding this content. I would also love to invite you to join the Dream Business Mastery Membership. In this membership, you will design your dream business based on your own personality. You will create crowd-pleasing products that transform lives. You will attract a loyal following who are queuing up to buy from you. You will achieve phenomenal and consistent growth and you will easily manifest all of your goals using my proven six-stage dream business mastery method. The Dream Business Mastery membership is specifically designed for content creators and online educators who are excited to manifest all of the results that they desire and appreciate a balanced life of doing work they love, making good money they actually have time to enjoy. This membership contains everything you need to make your business a success and you will get access to all of my current and future products in this membership. And right now I have a special introductory price. So go and join while that's still available. And you can join by going to kathkyle.com forward slash mastery or click the link surrounding this content. And now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.